this uh, video checkerboarding too because one of my viewers had some issues with uh, me making the checkerboarding vid video and calling it checkerboarding. First of all, I want to show you this is the same hive that I that I checkerboarded. Uh, so they had to pull six. I, I, I did six frames and if you uh, saw the first video everything in this bottom hive body was pretty pretty clean. In other words the brood pattern was good and it was solid. But up above that uh, it was very spotty. So I came to the conclusion that the comb was bad and uh, not the queen because they kept requeening it since last year. They also had a third hive body on here it was also spotty and I just removed that all together. So six of the ten frames were replaced. Two of those other frames were honey frames. Uh, they don't usually have brood on them so I'm not too worried about those. I will get around around to it later but uh, later now you can see the honey crop is on here and next week is when I'm extracting so I'm pulling these supers off next week. It's been a couple weeks so uh, I want to open them up and see what's in there but the issue with the checkerboarding was that I've been using that term for 20 years at least 20 years. Apparently a man named Walt Wright who I'm taking nothing away from coined the term back in 2006. My belief that he was just uh, using a term that he knew of and then he he had his own method in fact he called it the Walt Wright method of checkerboarding. He didn't say this is how you checkerboard or this is what I'm calling checkerboarding to my knowledge. He just said the Walt Wright method of checkerboarding. As you can see there's a lot of bees up here. They're extremely strong. However, because of that, and I think he wrote in a, a few articles and stuff, um, he became basically the, the uh, the beekeeper that coined that term. So no disrespect to him at all. You know wh what I said in the first video um, is what I believe to be true at the time. This uh, frame is pretty empty. It doesn't have much honey in it. And the super down below is pretty much full and capped. But this one has a lot of room in it so they've slowed down. So they made, you know, at least two, two honey supers, which is not bad when they had to pull six frames. They also lost some brood too when I, when I did that uh, procedure. But what I want to explain is, is that the Walt Wright method of checkerboarding is done above the brood nest. So um, he calls opening the brood nest what I did earlier and although I'm not sure he mentions anything about intersplicing frames so I will cease to use the word checkerboarding but uh, I wanted to explain his method which was to open the brood nest by putting in uh, uh, frames of foundation or uh, or pulled comb whatever and he doesn't necessarily say to use it in conjunction with checkerboarding but he does say that, that that's what he calls it is opening the brood nest when you work in the brood checkerboarding he reserves for frames that are basically let's say full empty full empty full empty and so on this one's full empty this one's empty full and that's what causes that checkerboarding pattern so uh, his thinking in developing what he his method of checkerboarding is is that you will um, you will trick the bees into thinking that there's not enough honey by pulling every other frame out of honey and putting in an empty comb. Um, and that way they won't swarm. So that's his method of checkerboarding. Uh, and it may be totally different in North Carolina, which is I believe where he's from. But here where I'm at, where I'm from, uh, it's a little different. So his method involves basically overwintering with uh, a hive body formation which in the video that I saw was a was a medium down below which he called a pollen box not sure why then a deep and then two mediums for honey supers with no queen excluder so I want to I want to stress that is that if you're 
if you're going to use Walt Wright method of checkerboarding, you do not want a queen excluder on there if you if you get into freezing temperatures because as the bees move up through the hive in the winter, they will move through the queen excluder, but the queen cannot, and she'll get left behind. That has happened, and it's been documented. Uh, not necessarily with his checkerboarding method, but in methods other than that. Okay, so when I made that first video on checkerboarding, basically what I wanted to do was get rid of old bad comb and put in, you know, have them pull fresh new comb, which I mission accomplished. It worked great. I've seen the brood pattern and it's, although it's still a little spotty, it's nowhere near as spotty as it was before. So uh, with that respect, it worked. So the, what I want to explain now is the difference between say the Walt Wright method and what I'm doing uh, first of all, I don't overwinter with any honey supers on. This is uh, honey surplus. It's now mid-August, and within the next week, I'm pulling all the honey supers. That gives them, in my area, two weeks left in August, all of September, and at least two weeks in October to fill this brood chamber, which they, you know, I rarely have hives starve because of a winter shortage. If, if of course they don't do that, then I'll feed them some supplemental syrup. Uh, usually it's not till next year in the in January, February, March usually at the latest. Um, so having this here provides them plenty of honey for next year. Also, I've had hives swarm with honey supers on them and hives that were putting honey in the supers. So the Walt Wright method Basically, I think that if you're if you're thinking that you can checkerboard the honey supers and trick the bees into thinking that they don't have enough honey to swarm, I think you're going to be disappointed because there's plenty of honey in the brood supers here to swarm, and they will do it. Bees swarm because of congestion in the brood nest, which does not include honey supers. Now, if you don't have a queen excluder on, it could if there's brood up here, but it's congestion in the brood nest. It's honey available, which is what he's talking about. And the third, and I think the most important variable, is honey available, nectar available out in the field. If there is sufficient nectar available out in the field, the bees will swarm. They will take as what they need. They will make a small swarm or a bigger swarm, depending on what, you know, the honey stores they have in the hive. But they will pull honey out of there, and they will swarm if there's a good honey nectar flow going on, a good nectar flow. Bottom line, so pulling, in my opinion, pulling frames of honey out of here will do very little to no good. Also, I put queen excluders on, and you can see, I'll show the rest of the yard at the end of the video. I have hives, I have a hive right there that has six honey supers on them. And queen excluders do not stop bees from going into the honey supers, not at all. So uh, what I want is a, is a crop that is nothing but honey, no brood, no nothing that's going to get into my product clouded up or, uh, or, you know, spoil it in any way. I want pure honey. I want no bee parts. So I use queen excluders for that reason and that reason alone. Plus, you know, you, this queen excluder here is about 40 years old. It's still, it's still working. As you can see, these two supers are full. This one's pretty empty. Okay, you can see that my queen excluders do not pro provide for any problems when it comes to bees having supers. That This hive here is a split that I just brought up. Uh, almost every hive up here has honey and lots of it. So if, if it has, like that hive there, one, two, three, four, five supers, you can bet at least four of them are chocked full. I don't know about the fifth yet because I haven't checked since I put on the newest supers. And then here over here you have one with six supers on it. So you can see that queen excluders are not something that hold it back. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you when I shoot checkerboarding three.